you love movies and movie discussions, you've come to the right place. Who am I, you ask? I am the Wiz, and I am here to review the 2020 computer animated film Soul, created by Pixar Animation Studios. Pixar, I mean, what more has to be said about Pixar? They probably make some of the best computer animated films out there. They're probably along the lines of what Ghibli is to animated films, hand-drawn animated films, I should say right now, where they not only have exquisite work visually, but their films actually pack a lot of depth in them that can land for an older audience as well. In fact, I would venture to say I think more older audiences enjoy the Pixar films more than I would say kids do at this point. Recently after the changeover, I think it was in 2019 is when John Lasseter left, there has been talks about the quality not being the standard that we're used to with Pixar. I, I don't think this is one of those movies. I, I think this was made during the time when Lasseter was there. So we're not really going to discuss much when it comes to Lasseter in this one. I will definitely get into my thoughts on Pixar and their way that they make their movies and what their movies are like. Uh, here's the review of Soul, the 2020 computer animated film created by Pixar Animation Studios. So I'm going to start this review by mentioning a few names. Let's start with, I don't know, Charlie Kaufman, Spike Jones, David Lynch. We'll even go Powell and Pressburger. Filmmakers who deal with heavy subjects in a philosophical bent but still make it entertaining and not entirely heavy to watch through uh, maybe maybe lynch is a bad uh, is a bad example of that maybe i have to come up with somebody else here but uh i would say pal and pressburger kaufman spike jones i i think they would hit the mark on there too uh the other filmmakers like that usually indie filmmakers who essentially take very complex thinking themes and make it digestible, but also entertaining and still thought-provoking. Soul reminds me of those types of movies. Soul seems to want to hit those notes, to talk about a very wide-ranging thing, such as death and finding your own purpose, but find it in a way that is both entertaining but easy to understand. And I don't think it really hits the mark quite well, but it's still a good watch and it's still entertaining in its own way. I will get into that more probably in spoilers, but why don't we get started with the particulars of this movie and we'll get right to the voice acting. I think the voice acting is pretty good. I think Jamie Foxx did a very good job as the main character of Joe. And then the other person that's in here that is the main voice actor, which is Tina Fey. Honestly, I think Tina Fey is the, the actor I like the most out of this. She brought the most laughs. She was the funniest. She was the most engaging. She was, uh, I, I think, the most charismatic. I don't think Jamie Foxx's performance is bad. I think it's pretty good. But the character that he's playing is very much a straight man. And he plays him very well. But I also know that Jamie Foxx can be very funny. And he can be very charismatic. And that wasn't really the purpose of Joe and, and Jamie Foxx's performance as Joe in this. My favorite performance here is probably Tina Fey. I think Graham Norton's pretty good in this, too, as a, a side character as well. The voice acting, pretty good. I actually liked it. I definitely like Tina Fey more in this. Let's get into direction, and then I'll go into writing. So direction, I like the look of the film. It has that Pixar quality feeling that I'm starting to get to a point where I think Pixar maybe needs to refresh what their look is. It's nice, I do like it, but it, it gave me Inside Out vibe. And I gotta be completely honest, I thought Inside Out was okay, but not great. I, I thought Inside Out was an all right movie that had uh, some flaws that I think held it back for me at least. Again, I'm not gonna say it's bad, but I think there was supposed to be more of a unique kind of flavor to it that just seemed like more window dressing than it actually was a feeling or a style. They were really married into that Pixar look. I, I really think that the creativity this movie was trying to come up with may have been hampered by the trappings of what makes a Pixar film. Why don't we get right into writing then? <sighs> writing. I definitely like the quieter moments of this movie. I like the character moments. I like how they go into some existential themes, some themes of finding your own purpose, value of life. And I think they do a, a good job of that. 
And the comedy that is in there with Tina Fey as well really works. The main issue that I have with this is this film feels stifled. Basically, how I feel about this film is that if this was not a Pixar film, I think this would have been a much more creative and much more risky film. But because it was a Disney Pixar film, it had to have the same look, it had the same feel, and I think they also borrowed the same ideas from Inside Out. I think this should have been a much more unique film. I think this should have been a film that uh, we're talking about much darker subjects, maybe something that might be a little bit upsetting to a younger audience. But I, I really don't think this is a movie that was meant for kids. I think this was meant to be an adult movie. I'm not saying like an R-rated hardcore movie with like hardcore sex and blood and guts and cursing, but like a PG-13 movie, maybe even a rated R movie, but like an adult movie. Not like an, like, like an adult with sex and violence, but an adult where it makes an adult think. It makes an adult want to uh, process their life and think about certain things about their life. I think this is what the film was, is supposed to do. But because it was under the Pixar umbrella and with Disney, a lot of those harder edges were sanded down. And with some movies that could work, but in this movie, I think it hurt it. It's not hurting it to the point where I would say it's bad. I think it hurts it to a point where it could have been great, amazing. Probably one of the, th the best things that Pixar has done. But because they had to stay married to that formula, I think it hurt it. Again, I think the comparisons that I would give this to is Inside Out. It's about a person that is within the machinery of something ethereal, or it has to be personified in a way for people to understand. So for example, in Inside Out, in the, the mind of a, an adolescent girl, there isn't a machinery or there isn't like a corporation or a job that really is there. So they had to personify everything and everybody had certain things. There was anger, there was sadness, there was this, there's that, da, 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 da. And there lied the creativity, well, that made it unique because it was personifying how the mind works. And they tried to pull the same thing with life and death. And I don't think it was as clever as I think that the filmmakers thought it was going to be in this one. I honestly was less concerned and less impressed and engaged with the life death part where they were, where Joe was dead and he was a soul and he was going through his things with 22, which is Tina Fey's character. I was less engaged with that stuff than I was with Joe's issues on earth. Because of that, I honestly think it's because it was made by Pixar. They had to go that same route again. And some people like it. Some people enjoy that. And that's great. But I really think there was a bigger idea in this movie that was left unexplored. To me, it hurts the film. It, again, it doesn't make it bad. It just makes it not what I think it could have been. We'll get into spoilers for Soul, the 2020 computer animated film created by Pixar Animated Studios. If you have not seen it, come back when you are ready. We'll get into spoilers in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. When it comes to Soul and the issues that I have with it, in, in one of the rarest circumstances I think I'll ever think of, I think it being a Pixar film actually hurt it. When it came to the creative part of this movie, which is the whole life death sequences that you know joe is dead he's a soul 22 is a soul i guess in training uh yeah like 22 is a soul in training trying to be prepared to go into earth to become life as much as i like the tina fey jamie fox a relationship that happens in the film and it does provide some laughs it does provide some entertaining banter i think the concept isn't very well thought out it really reminded of Inside Out. And Inside Out, had I had issues with that too. I didn't think the concept of Inside Out was very clever. I think they tried to do it in, a, in, in the usual Pixar way to make it entertaining and funny. And there were funny parts to it. But I, I think Soul is funnier than Inside Out. But I think Inside Out's concept is much more thought out. But I, I will end up liking Soul a lot more. There are these people that are in the life-death area called Jerry's and Terry's. And they all have the same name, but they have different voices. They are made out to be stick figures of sorts. 
and it's not explained why. And the other thing is like souls are just basically ghosts. And again, not very well explained. And another thing, I think the problem I have with the way the life death areas are is they don't really explain the nuances in a very good way. So like, why do people get personalities? Oh, because Jerry and Terry said so. That's their personalities. I'm like, okay, that's not great. Why are certain people assigned certain souls? Because we did. Okay. Like with Inside Out at least, when they show everything that's going on in there, it's pretty well explained without having to be explained. But with this concept, it probably needs to be explained a lot better. But in order to explain it better, you come up with much darker things that you have to discuss that will get be let out with the concept of the film. But because it's a Disney Pixar film, you can't get too deep or too dark. And I think that's why it being a Disney Pixar film is its ultimate weakness. Because it just feels like a film that if you would have let somebody like Kemp Powers, I really think the creativity is more on Kemp Powers here. Because I think a lot of the things in this movie is all of Kemp Powers stuff. It's the way the characters act, the way they interact with each other, the dialogue. I can sense this is Kemp Powers who did this. Kemp Powers also uh, wrote the really good One Night in Miami. If you have not seen that, that's a really good movie. He wrote that as well. So I am putting myself on a limb and saying I think he wrote most of the dialogue in this movie. I think if you gave Kemp Powers writing credit and directing credit with someone like Spike Jones to make this movie, I think this would be something wholly original and would have more depth into it. But because it's hamstrung and it has to be a PG movie, a lot of the darker aspects and a lot of the deeper aspects that might upset some people were taken right out. And because of that, I really feel the life-death sequences are not well thought out. And then in the middle of the movie, it turns into like a Freaky Friday kind of thing because 22 and Joe find a loophole of some sort, which is also not really well explained to get back into the living world. But somehow they get mixed up where 22 is in Joe's body and Joe is in a cat, which I'll, I'll even say like the comedy in that is pretty good. But again, it doesn't explain exactly why other than uh, some wires got crossed. Okay, sure. I, I can buy into it and I can enjoy it and find it funny. But that's in itself disappointing because I think they were trying to go for something a lot more thoughtful and I just don't think it got. And I think that's my big criticism of this film and why I'm going to keep hammering it home. The fact that I think because this, it's a Pixar film, because it's made by Disney, the creativity was kind of sapped in this. It just seems like in this movie, they had a, what I think is a good idea in this. What this film reminded me of, honestly, was Powell and Pressburger's A Matter of Life and Death. If you haven't seen it, it's a good movie. I definitely enjoy it. Big thing about that film is the way it looks in, in the death sequences. That, I think, is what it's most known for. But the story in A Matter of Life and Death is about life affirming, finding your purpose, finding love, finding what makes you live, what makes you want to live. And that's one of the best things about that movie. This movie does that, but instead of the ethereal sequences, the life and death sequences enhancing it, it does it in spite of those sequences. And I think that hurts this film. It still makes it a good movie, but it doesn't make it a great movie or an exceptional movie, which I really think this could have been, but it just doesn't seem to hit that plateau. Okay, so final thoughts on Soul. Yeah, I liked the movie. I was entertained by it. I thought it was funny. I like Jamie Foxx and Tina Fey. I especially like Tina Fey in this movie. I can't believe I'm saying this, but the creativity was sapped because it was made by Pixar. I think if this was made by another company or just made by another director, they would have taken a much more gutsy stance in this movie. And I think because of that, it went in a safe route and a very familiar route where I think the film didn't have to go that route. It could have went into a much deeper area. I do like the dialogue. I do like the characters in this film. I'll put it this way. It is a good movie. It is an entertaining movie. I will recommend it. But I definitely see the things in this movie that could have made it great. That could have made it outstanding. And it just wasn't given that chance. I'm going to give this three and a half stars out of five. I definitely recommend it. It's a good movie. But man, it could have been so much more. And I think that's what I find disappointing about it. And for a three and a half star movie, that's good. 
but this could have been a lot more, I think. So three and a half out of five for me for Soul. Definitely a good movie. Definitely watch it if you haven't. But man, I really wanted more out of this. And that's, I think, the biggest disappointment.